Hello there. Today I'm taking a look at a dry, crisp white wine from the south of France. So this is Domaine Félines Jourdain, and it's the Picpoul de Pinay AOP. It's the 2022 vintage of that. Now the Jourdain family have owned this estate since 1983, and they make the point that Prior to that, several generations of their family had been winemakers anyway. Picpoul de Pinot is a, a quite straightforward, high acid white wine made from the Picpoul grape variety. In fact, the variety retains its acidity so well that its name, Picpoul, means stings the lips. Picpoul de Pinot is a really quite small appellation in the south of France near the town of Set. And that's about equidistant between Montpellier and Bouzier, right on the coast. In fact, the vineyards run pretty much right up to the Etang de Thau, which is a saltwater lagoon, which is about three kilometres wide, that sits on the coast and runs for about 11 kilometres. So it's, it's quite a large body of water in itself, but it slightly protects the land from the, the, the Mediterranean. So here we have a relatively hot area with quite low rainfall, about 600 millimetres a year, with a cooling maritime influence. Particularly those vineyards that are really close to the sea, you actually get a sort of a certain amount of cooling moisture in, in the winds as they blow onshore. Pickpool's an ancient variety that was almost wiped out with the arrival of vine diseases such as mildew and oedium in the 1880s. It was also badly hit by phylloxera. So uh, more coastal regions such as P Picpoul de Pinay often had areas of sandy vineyards where the Baroxera Laos couldn't operate, so hence its preservation in, in this sort of area. Domaines, Felines, Jordan vines in three separate and quite distinct locations. First of all, near their winery in Meze, you're down right by the lagoon and the altitude here ranges from between one metre above sea level up to 12. It's gently sloping soils, they are clay and limestone. The second location is a place called Cadastre, and that's about two kilometres inland from the winery itself. Here the soils are more of a mixture, so you've got white chalky soils, and then you've got red gravels. The altitude's a little higher here, you've risen up to about 50 metres above sea level, although there's not quite as much maritime influence to moderate the temperature the slight increase in altitude helps to mitigate that. The final location where they grow the pig pool is a place called La Coulette. Uh, this is where they also grow their red grape varieties. So it's a warmer terroir in the whole. And here we're 70 metres above sea level. These are east facing slopes on a long hillside with red soils that comprise granite and quartz. Further inland the vines here are more at risk from some of the winds that they get in this region, uh, the mistral for instance, and so the pickpool tends to be planted close up against the sides of the pine forests here. The vineyards are run entirely sustainably. The fruit is hand harvested in the cool of the night to retain its freshness, and on arrival at the winery it undergoes several hours of skin contact to, to macerate, to take flavours and aromas out of the skins. When pressing happens, it's gentle, it's performed with pneumatic presses, and afterwards the juice is chilled and cold double decanted to ensure that it's clean juice and all the solids have been removed from it. Fermentation takes place in temperature controlled stainless steel tanks at 16 degrees Celsius, so relatively cool, helping to try and preserve as much of the aromas of the fruit as possible, and to ensure as much of the variety's crisp acidity is retained as possible, malolactic conversion is blocked. It's possible there may also be a tiny touch of these ageing, but I don't have any details confirming if or for how long that went on. The wine's then bottled young to preserve its freshness and is normally a, a wine that should be drunk in the first year or so of its life. So let's have a look at it, shall we? The wine has a relatively deep colour. It's That's a, at least a medium yellow colour. It almost has a straw-coloured note to it. Let's see what make of the aroma, shall we? The aromas reflect the cool fermentation in that they're sort of slightly, and I do only mean slightly, um, estery and maybe slightly banana-y. Those sort of lifted, high-toned notes there. 
but also there's a concentration, a, a, a weight of sort of maybe slightly peachy fruit. It might be slightly honeyed touches. And there's a slight sort of toastiness to it. Now that, that's not a toastiness that's coming from oak whatsoever. It could, could possibly have something to do with the fermentation, but that would only have to be a very slight extent. So let's have a taste, shall we? Palettes of mid-weight. There's really good crisp acidity. You don't notice it at first because there's this quite nice weight of peachy fruit and then all of a sudden yes you get this quite tart freshness. It's, it's almost, the, almost hits the mid palate after it's been sitting in your mouth for a little while. It, it sort of breaks through. There's a slight sort of milky touch to the texture, so I don't know if that's an indication that there have been that there has been a little bit of lees aging going on here. The wines of light to medium weight. It has a rounded nature, and the alcohol, which according to the label is 13%, is is helping to round out the mid palate quite nicely. It's not a particularly delicate wine. It's finishing with good acidity. There are sort of lemony grapefruit notes at the end, and perhaps a touch of that that delicate peachiness. Really, it's quite a simple, straightforward wine. And its principal virtue is this really quite crisp, sharp, mouth-watering acid, which really gives quite lively fruit. It's worth saying I have this wine really well chilled, and I think that's the way to serve Pool de Pinot, really, so that you're getting as much of this the freshness and keeping the fruit lovely and clean, and that, that way it becomes a really refreshing drink that would make a lovely aperitif and is a great complement for lovely fresh seafood or that sort of thing. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, do please press the like button. Any comments you have, any feedback, please leave those in the box below. We'd love to hear what you think about what we're doing with the tastings, with the wines we're looking at, or anything to do with that. If you have any friends who you think might be interested in the video, do please share it with them. If you wanted to sign up and follow us, do please do so. It would be great to have your support. But most importantly, do please try and make sure you come and join us for another tasting in the near future, won't you? Thanks again. Bye for now.